behalf of the black clergy of Philadelphia and vicinity. And we've come today in solidarity with our sisters and brothers here in the community. We have churches all over the city and many here in North Central Philadelphia. Uh, to stand in opposition to the proposed stadium uh, proposed to be constructed by Temple University. As members of black clergy, it's our commitment to stand up where people either are either without a voice or when their voices have been ignored or when their voices have been silenced. And we stand here because of the potential disruption. We stand here because of the increased tax burden on all of us. Yes. Amen. We stand here because of what it says about the disempowerment of our people in the community and their lack of inclusion in the process. Yes. But we also stand here because of the spirit of arrogance that suggests that powerful institutions can just assert their political and economic will by encroaching on community. In football, encroachment is a penalty. And I want, to see, want you to know that this statement, stadium issue is not an isolated issue, but it's an issue that's part of a trend that's affecting low-income communities and historical communities of color across the city. My church is in West Philadelphia, and I can tell you that as Temple encroaches on North Central Philadelphia, University of Penn and, and Drexel encroaches on West Philadelphia. Pushing people who have lived in the adjacent uh, neighborhoods and who can no longer afford the taxes or who are pressured by to sell by, by profit-driven developers out of neighborhoods that they've lived in, that they've worked in, that they have raised their children in. Children and other historic institutions, all of the city being displaced from neighborhoods they once called home because of gentrification that's being exacerbated by the urban sprawl of institutions like Temple and other fast development and esteem-driven entities. And as these powerful institutions identify selected people to interview before they move ahead with their already predetermined plans. And in most cases, the vast majority of the people in those communities remain voiceless and therefore powerless and end up being literally and figuratively steamrolled out of their homes. We're here today to say that this stops now. It stops today. today. We love football, but we're calling a timeout yeah. for people being stepped over, stepped around, pushed out. We love football, but, but the people in this community will not be a football. Passed, hunted, kicked, and carried across a city line in order for institutions to score profit points or get land grab wins. <laughs> Therefore, we as black clergy of Philadelphia and vicinity stand with the NAACP. We stand with the stadium stompers against this proposal. It's time to push back. And I'm a committee person, so I'm going to focus tonight on my experience uh, being a committee person for, I guess, four years. Uh, I don't think I was the best at it, but I tried to do what I could do. Um, I'm going to use two words with respect to that experience. Disappointing and passionate. Okay? Disappointing, the disappointed, and passionate. Why disappointing? It's hard going to ward meetings with other committee folks when I brought up the issue of the stadium, and some responses were not from everybody, but really? I thought it was already built. I think they were confusing what's happening at Broad and Norris to 16th with the tearing down of William Penn High School right? and that soccer field being put up there. But here's my favorite response that I've heard from many people, not only in the committee but outside. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. What's your problem? What's wrong with you? 
Over these past two years, when I brought some stadium stomper flyers to meetings, the responses have been head nods or silence. At a fundraiser in August 2016, Ward Leader Gary Williams said point blank, it's a done deal. Senator Street, who was campaigning at the time, said that people need to be talking to the Eagles. Now, at a December, this is recent, December 2017 holiday award party, as a party, okay, I brought up the stadium again. Okay, my timing may have been off a little bit because it was a parte. But <laughs> Gary Williams said again that the stadium was a done deal and that I was being, ready for the word? I was being naive about how things work. He then went on to say that I couldn't get five people talking about the committee people at that particular party, that I probably couldn't get five people to join this cause. That's when I lost it. So I simply said, and we got some folks here that were there, I have to get five people? What you doing? Okay, I gotta get five people? The stadium should never have been considered for our neighborhood, which That's is highly right. residential. That's right. That's right. I then caught my breath because it was getting a little, little toasty, a little toasty. I exhaled and these words came out. And these are going to be words that I know will get back, but I don't, I don't care. Okay? You haven't shown any leadership with this, Gary. Tell it. With respect to this assault on us. And it's not just Gary. It's, it's, a, it's a barrage of people. But I'm talking about board and committee, okay? His stance took another turn when I said that, and his tone changed too. He brought up 15th Street as a possible area of concern if it is closed. I say about time. Now passionate, that other word passionate, then I'm gonna close. Change is going to happen, we are aware of that. We know this, but change happening to drive black folks out from their homes, neighborhood, culture, history, and above all, our memories, our memories of unlawful Yes, I am passionate about our stopping the city from being built. And I am not naive. This effort is wrong-headed, no matter how you look at it. Silence by those who are there to make best efforts to keep our neighbors informed is unacceptable. So, everybody, stand up, speak up, show up. Enough That's is right. enough. Right. Reverend Rhonda said, no new stadium. We shall not be moved. Yeah. You heard. We come to stand and tell you tonight that the clergy caucus of power, Philadelphians organized to witness, empower, and rebuild an interfaith movement here in the city of Philadelphia and beyond, stands in solidarity with you on tonight. We stand with you to say, no stadium. No stadium. No deal. No deal. We shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. My name is Donna Price, and I live at 19th and Master Street. And I've been there almost 20 years come back. And this week I received a letter from Temple University. And almost the 20 years that I've been there, I've never received anything from them. And the first thing when you open up the pamphlet is about this stadium. I deal with issues on a day-to-day -day basis with their students, parking in my driveway, changing their tires, getting nasty with you, saying, why are you coming out your house to say something to me? And I just had an incident two weeks ago with a young lady and I told her, I don't know what your parents allow, but I don't allow disrespect to me. And I told her that you're in my space. You're in my space. And I'm here, and I'm not going nowhere. That's right. But you're going to move. And what you're not going to do is disrespect me. Uh, we are passionate about how we feel and we want you not only to hear that passion but to feel that passion but rather they have chosen in a cowardly way to allow the male person to do their dirty work and so some of us some of us uh, in, in our communities uh, have received uh, that fake news uh, letter uh, that they ought to put in our mailboxes. We don't want fake news in the mailbox. We want a real live person. 
and, and I, I just got a good idea. You ought to just write no stadium on there and, and put return to the center. Uh, and let them do really what they want to do. And I said, the entire people deciding that they want to come in my neighborhood and tell me how to live, what to do. You don't ask whether we want to stay. They had a state and they sold it. So who are they to knock them out? You want to go say play football? First of all, they don't even have a team that's that great to have it. Figure out what they're going to do because as long as I'm standing here, I'm going to do my best to make sure they're never standing here. And as I said at the outset, many community members said they wanted to hear about the facility. And what we want to do is provide you with all the information that we have. So thank you for your patience. So let me be very clear about a few points. No one will lose their property or homes if the project moves forward. The facility will be located only on Temple land. However, 15th Street, 15th Street would be closed at North and for a half block, but it would be open on the Montgomery side so that vehicles can come into the facility. The facility will include a stadium, to host no more than seven college football games a year. There are no plans for concerts or similar events. However, we do think it could be a venue for an annual public league championship football game or to play host to other appropriate community activities such as neighborhood youth camps. The consultation process regarding the proposed facility continues. We will continue to listen and to work with our neighbors to adjust our plans accordingly, to go through the intensive and comprehensive city planning committee and city council processes. Let me move to the second question. Let me list five initiatives that we're engaged in along with the multi-purpose facility project. First, Temple University, through our College of Education, is planning what we call an Alpha Center to be constructed on Temple University property at the northwest corner of 13th and Diamond. The center will provide critical early learning, mental health, dental, and job training resources for the North Philadelphia community, as well as research and training for students and faculty. And it will include an early childhood learning center with capacity reserved for the community. Number two, the Laborers Union training facility near Broadway Master Streets is still in the works and progressing. Through collaboration with Temple, the laborers, for the first time, will make training opportunities available in North Philadelphia. That's a pathway to good jobs. We are in, number three, we are in the final stages of mounting a comprehensive workforce development initiative for North Philadelphia. By building on the initiatives Temple currently offers, we foresee this as a hub for facilitating job training and employment for all North Philadelphians. We will have more details on this vital facility later this spring. Number four, we are prepared to make a substantial investment in the Amos Recreation Center. Let it be clear, the center will not be adversely affected by the proposed multi-purpose facility. In fact, it will be enhanced 
with a commitment from the university. And five, Temple's new library is scheduled for completion in early 2019. Our local community members will have access to this state-of-the-art facility in much the same way you've been able to use a library. These initiatives are in addition to the more than 300 community programs and the vast array of medical, dental, public health, educational, legal, and artistic benefits and scholarships we regularly provide to our neighbors. The third question, in what areas do I think that we at Temple University need to be better for our neighbors? Outside of brick and mortar buildings and facilities and initiatives I've just named, we can do more for our neighbors and for our North Philadelphia community, and it starts with trust and respect. I've learned here, I've learned during these three months of conversation it is this. I understand that we need to do a better job of listening to our neighbors and acknowledging their unique experiences. We need to have better communications with our neighbors. We have to make certain that we don't make promises we can't keep. Improved relations between the university and our neighbors must be built on trust. I have been at Temple for 42 years. Because it's such a crazy idea to put a 35,000 seat stadium across a single one lane one lane road from people's homes, from someone's daycare, from a retirement community. I thought it would not go any further than some half-baked idea by the Board of Trustees of Temple University. Unfortunately, I was incorrect. Unfortunately, it outlasted Theobald. It outlasted a high loan guy who misplaced like 200 million dollars of our scholarship money or something. Right. It, it, it outlasted the previous president and it's continued. This is the brainchild of the chairman of the board of trustees, um, Patrick O'Connor. Not only, not only was Patrick O'Connor the chairman of the board of trustees until he was forced to resign for a conflict of interest because he was also Bill Cosby's defense attorney in a case against a faculty member he assaulted at Temple University. Not only does Patrick O'Connor own $26 million in Geo Group stock that is a private prison that locks up young black men from this area for Patrick O'Connor's profit. Not only this, not only this, but his law firm, O'Connor Cozen, brags on their website that they will come down to your picket lines and they will union bust on your picket lines. They will actively fight against workers. They will actively fight against the interests that we share as residents and neighbors. Uh, well, I'm going a little bit over. My dad, I'm like a fourth or fifth generation Philadelphian. My father attended this university after getting back from Vietnam. When he got back, this was a working class institution. It was built to serve under Russell Conwell's vision to educate the North Philadelphia community and to uplift Philadelphia as a whole. Temple's half-baked attempt to become Michigan State, to become Penn State, is is undeniably an attack on the ability and the meritocracy for the working class of Philadelphia and North Central Philadelphia to progress, to be able to develop, to be able to get training, to have jobs in our economy. This combined with the 10-year tax abatement that was passed by Mayor John Street to benefit developers in this area is a disgusting attack, particularly on the working class of North Central Philadelphia. And I thought it was disgusting when Angler declared that he would be creating a special service district around the stadium to pay for the cleanup. 
Well, if the developers don't have to pay taxes, right, who's paying for that cleanup? Long-term residents and homeowners! And he doesn't think he'll figure that out. It's disgusting when, pa when Patrick O'Connor and Engler say that they've had meetings with this community when we know that not to be true. When they think, when they won't show up to our meetings and they think they can have one during spring break so students won't mobilize and so we won't be able to get out people's interest to be able to fight against their half-brained idea. This is a bad idea for students as well. And I'm a football fan. So we can take a 20 minute train ride to one of the nicest football facilities in the world. A football facility If you're a taxpayer and you don't want a stadium, blow your horn! Blow your horn! Let some of them know! Let them know! Blow your horn! Taxpayers, let them know! They need to, if they have $130 million, they need to reduce the student tuition hardship. They need to pay the adjunct professors a decent livable wage. No stadium in our community. We no stadium in our community. We don't want tailgating in our community. No stadium in our community. No stadium. No stadium. No stadium in our community. We are. We are not. Different, different issues, issues and concerns. And concerns. I'm finding, I'm so, finding many, so many different mentalities. Different mentality it seems hard. It seems hard. It seems challenging. challenging. I'm going to say hard because the only thing hard, hard is behind creeks that we walk on. Everything, we walk on. everything else, else is a else challenge. Is a challenge. challenge. Um, so, so, I'm ready for, I'm this, ready challenge. for this challenge. And I was built, and I was built for this. I think that, I think we, that all we all have a purpose in life. And mine's, and mine's going to take on a task that most of that most are back away, back from, away from. That impossible, that impossible that people say is impossible. I see possibilities. I don't see anything, I don't see anything as being impossible. Mentalities, 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 there are different, there are different mentalities, mentalities, but just like just there's like different, there's ways, different to ways to teach people, people how to read, there's, there's different, different, ways, different ways, to ways to communicate people. There's different ways, there's different ways to communicate people, and there's.